we're going to tell it to go to M42. If you love the how do I make things, that makes you an engineer. What's your end goal? Do you love the why questions? That makes you a scientist. And this should be the Orion Nebula. And there it is, right in the dead center. This is a strain of mouse uh, that I discovered when I was a postdoc at Northwestern University. This is called a clinical score. We want to establish how far in the disease process this particular mouse is. You know, one of the reasons that I came to Westmont is because I love sharing that moment with science students who make a discovery in the laboratory for the first time. I love getting to find out things that nobody else has found out before. I remember in undergrad, I sequenced a gene from a dolphin, and I held that sequence in my hand, and I thought, nobody's ever seen this in the world, ever. I'm the first one. I love discovery. It's like a drug. <laughs> yeah. We're getting a little bit more wave activity now. I think that's a function of the fact that we have a storm coming. An ecologist is someone who studies the interactions of all living things with each other and with the non-living world. So everyone thinks that this is actually a jellyfish. It's actually a colony. A gifted biologist is very curious. It's kind of really one of the most important things that you have to have is just this innate curiosity. Why does it work the way that it works? Why is it doing what it's doing? I love studying environmental biology because it allows me to see the interconnections, the complexity of the living world, and it draws me closer to the creator. Okay, let's see if we can find the tiny shrimp. Oh my gosh, that is tiny. Oh, look at you, look at you. I think it's a little skeleton shrimp. Yeah. The liberal arts education helps you understand what the key questions are in the sciences. And that's the most important concept is what should you be asking, even more than what the answers are. This is the bed of nails demonstration, which we're going to do here with Dr. Kilstrom today. A lot of people think like mathematics is just numbers, but it, it's not. It's not about numbers so much as it is about abstract patterns. Mathematics, in a sense, is a language that describes the natural world. I will place the smaller bed on top of him and let it sink into his soft flesh. <laughs> the real excitement of a physicist is where you know something that no one else in the world knows because you've just done a measurement, you've just done a discovery. That's exciting. And then this 30 pound block on top of that, like Sweet. so. Okay, so this is gonna demonstrate the idea of inertia. If I got hit in the chest with a sledgehammer, I die. I think science can help you understand your faith better, and I think faith can help you understand science better. And I think those are critical. So now the entire mass is coming at my chest with that final velocity. I've gotta bring it to a halt. Well, that's force times distance. So I think people are created in God's image, and that gives us the opportunity to see the universe as God sees it. So I think we can understand God's creation because he made us in his image. Yeah, I think the heart of why we're like God is the creativity of being able to create, create things that weren't there before, to expand knowledge, not merely pass it on. That's the heart of creativity, and I think it's the heart of God. Are you ready? No, it's just not right. I'm going to have to go pray about this. Hey? This makes this integration of faith and learning. <laughs> it's the moment I've been dreaming about for 20 years. <laughs> you okay? Yep. I create to try and do new things in new ways and convey the excitement of physics. That, that's what I love, is I love physics and I hope my students love physics. We were having trouble opening up the files that we had saved of the decalogue. It's much easier to kind of understand the process of the tutorial takes yeah. a while, but. Chemistry is exciting to me because it's a process of discovery and uh, we never know what we're gonna find in the lab each day. 
faculty at Westmont know their students very well, and it's a really beautiful thing, and we develop very deep relationships, and uh, it's definitely a privilege to be a part of their journey. This, uh -huh. this carbon carbon bond, that carbon carbon bond, and these two are coming out towards us. Yeah. So that looks great. What we're showing here is an analog experiment on a rotating tank with uh, ice in the middle to simulate our pole. The moving power of mathematical invention is not reasoning, but imagination. And if you think of mathematics as all formula, you've just got the wrong picture. So I always tell my students, if you want something that really stretches your creativity, if you're looking for a creative outlet, mathematics is one of the subjects that will really do that. Here I have some dye to demonstrate the cold um, water and the, and the warm water. You're trying to look at patterns, see connections between them, because mathematics is the essence of modern science. And if you want to be a lib liberally educated person, you ought to understand, wouldn't you, the fundamentals of all of modern science, which at its core is mathematics. Yeah, I always think of physics as understanding things intuitively and beating the math to death. Um, both are really necessary. It's important that you choose something that you have a passion for and that's challenging to you. And then God will fit you into a career where you can use your training and gifts. And I think that the genius of Westmont is that you have highly qualified, personable, good teaching faculty who are committed to working with undergraduates. I like to encourage students not primarily to ask the question, what am I going to do with the major? The better question to ask is, what is the major going to do with me? I'll add the blue dye at the center. How is it going to help shape me? How is it going to help create a thinking, critical person that can contribute to society? That's the reason for being educated in the first place. Not for personal gain, although that comes sort of as a bonus, but you do it for a personal service, for service to your king. So these are our characteristic size of our storm systems in the mid-latitude. We recently remodeled the instructional laboratories in our science building. We wanted to maximize interaction between students, between one student and another student, and we also wanted to maximize interaction between students and the instructor. So we redesigned the space in order to improve interactions across the lab. I, I think in today's world, especially mathematics, is at the center of a lot of modes of inquiry. So the internet itself is a mathematical object. And a lot of the great ideas in computer science come out of mathematics. OK, so the main thing we're trying to learn is how to program on a graph. It's beyond just thinking about, um, you know, I want to make an app. Being a computer scientist is about understanding how to organize information for the world. Problems that computer scientists are going to be solving five and ten years from now are problems that have never been encountered before. And situations like that require creativity, and creativity doesn't come from, you know, nothing. It has to be developed. Uh, you could imagine wanting to get pharmaceuticals from one place to another really quickly. Of course, Amazon is working on um, a drone delivery system. What you're doing up here is about trying to um, move the drones around efficiently as if they were delivering passengers, as they might someday. So why don't we go outside and take a look at how the real drone performs, and that will give us some insight into how much, so uh, getting a really detail. broad background in the liberal arts, um, understanding the world from a lot of different perspectives is going to give you tools that you can bring to bear on solving problems in the future. And then working through, okay, so now that you can do this, what's appropriate? How can you move forward? Should you be doing this alone or should you be doing this in community? You want to be around people that um, uh, are following Christ because they're called I'm going to tear up. Gosh. <laughs> you want to be around people who are called to something higher. What is a microstate? What do you think, Leandra? Down at the quantum mechanics level, they're different. I think between the ages of 18 and 22, students shouldn't be focused so much on job training. I think they should be focused on learning about the world we live in and learning about what it means to be human. Uh, if you learn those things really well, those will make you effective in all kinds of pursuits, even things that don't even exist now. Hit right here, your return to landing, pull it down, and just let it go. Now send it up maybe 100 feet. Science is the study of the world, and our faith connects us to ultimate reality and to God who loves us. And if they're both true, then uh, we need to think deeply and carefully about both together.